Hello and welcome to our online worship for Easter Day 2022. My name is Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team and it's really good to be with you and worship together with you. I hope you have had a good Holy Week, perhaps you've been enjoying in with the reflections online, perhaps you've attended our Zoom Compline in the evenings or even been able to come to church for communion uh, for time of reflection. I hope that you've had a holy and blessed journey to this point. And today is a day of celebration, a much look forward to day of celebration of new life and victory over the grave. Our contributors in our worship today are Sean and Ian Robinson, and I'm going to be doing the reflection on our Bible passage. So let's prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we join together in that wonderful Easter hymn, Thine be the glory. come to our prayers of penitence. Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We pray, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. 
renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect Prayer for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might now and in all eternity. Amen. We say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We listen to our reading. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone that had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them, that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We have a time of reflection on today's reading. It is wonderful and glorious to celebrate Easter today. And to be honest, I really struggled with Lent this year. I have found it very hard 
to be penitent and lamenting, I found it difficult to stay in that very subdued mood that Lent can require of us. And I think it's partly because the world feels in a Lenten place. Um, the invasion of Ukraine has pretty much paralleled the length of Lent and it has been uh, hard to, to not help but see Lent through the lens of that conflict. The readings and the Psalms particularly have had this real sense of burden, of peace, of praying and despairing for those who are caught up in such terrible times. And as I've read those words of liturgy and, and of a scripture, I have thought how apt they are, but I have also wanted to kind of run away from them because there is so much to lament and so much suffering in the world that I don't want to dwell in those words. I, I want to rush on <laughs> to the joy of Easter. Now, that probably says something about me, about wanting to uh, not be in the bad place. And I guess that's true of most of us. We don't want to dwell in suffering if we can help it. Um, and that's partly because we're privileged and we're privileged to be able to move on. I can turn the telly off. Uh, I can choose not to see pictures of what's happening in Ukraine. And of course, that privilege is not afforded those who are living there or those who have fled but still have relations and friends there. And I'm very mindful of that suffering. But of course, the suffering is exactly what God is reminding us of during Lent and into Good Friday. God knows what it is to suffer. When Jesus is pinned to the cross and the Roman authorities believe that they have triumphed, of course, it isn't a place of victory for evil. It is a place of victory for good. Because on the cross, Jesus takes the suffering and the shame and the sin of the whole world and transforms it, takes it away, transforms it into something new, into something pure, into something good. The cross removes any barriers we might have between us and God. The cross gives us the potential for a new beginning. And so when we come to the empty tomb, that new beginning is confirmed. Death has not defeated God. Death has not defeated Jesus Christ. Death will not defeat us. Death is not the final answer. Victory is assured and victory is over the grave, over the powers of death and evil and shame and suffering because Jesus is alive and that living, that joy, that energy, that new life brings us hope that we too will have new life with him. And it reminds me that figure of the empty tomb, I talk about it a lot with the young people and children in school, you know, it's the hollow Easter egg. There's nothing there, there's nothing there because God cannot be contained. God cannot be parceled up and a stone rolled in front of him and him kept trapped in any place. His power, his love, his joy, his hope is bigger than any place we would seek to contain him. And it's saying that it's true for churches. You know, churches are not where we hide God away. Churches are where we come to talk about God, to experience God, to worship God. But God is not confined to those four walls. As you well know, because you have probably been worshipping with us online for a number of months, even a couple of years now. And you know very well that God is as much with you in the confines of your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or your study, wherever you happen to watch this worship and take part in it. God is as present and as real to us here in our homes, outside in the world that we walk and, and live in as he is in any church. We cannot contain God. We try because it's much easier to understand God if we can make him limited, if we can understand him with our own parameters and boundaries. But God is bigger than that. God is bursting out of the tomb, bringing new life and new hope. And so it's those two things that have really stuck with me this Easter day, that God cannot be contained, that he is present and active in the world now 
and that God knows the pain of suffering. He experiences for it for himself, but he turns all that suffering into the potential for hope. And even if we are stuck in Good Friday because we find ourselves in situations that have not moved on yet, and that can be true for people. I don't want to kind of brush over Good Friday as being only a moment in time, because if you're trapped in a, a conflict, for example, or in grief, or in a health struggle, or in depression, or in a place where you feel very, very down and very, very alone, it doesn't always go immediately. But what I 100% know and believe is that God is with us in that suffering and that there is always hope and there is a guarantee and a promise that we will not stay there, that we will move on and have a new beginning, whether that new beginning is here on earth, whether that new beginning is with God forever. There is always hope. There is always new life. God cannot be contained. He is alive and risen and with us today, bringing us hope even in the darkest places. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We affirm our faith using the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. In joy and hope, let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Loving Father, you promised through your Son to hear us when we pray in faith. We give you thanks that we are able to gather as your Easter people and share in fellowship your good news. Lord of nations, on this holy day and in the light of Christ's victory over death, guide world leaders to work together to overcome violence against all. Uphold those across the world who are living and dying in fear, living and dying in want, living and dying in darkness, those displaced by war, intolerance and natural disaster. Loving Lord, shine your light in the darkest corners of the world so that those who suffer can feel your ever-loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of justice, on this holy day and in the light of Christ's victory over death, give wisdom to our Queen and her government and all in authority, that they may govern with integrity in the ways of justice and peace. Walk with our communities, with those who live or work in them, with those who visit us. Give grace to our school communities, that they may hear the message of love and fellowship while striving to know you. Guide those coming to baptism and those preparing for marriage. Help us to show your love to all we meet in our daily lives as a Christian witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord of ages, on this holy day and in the light of Christ's victory over death, strengthen and guide our bishops, Karen and Andrew, and Stephen as he prepares to take up his post. Grant strength to our own team, David, Joe, Fiona. Uphold our partner priests, lay licensed ministers, church wardens, lay pastoral assistants, children's workers, our singers and ringers and music makers, and all those who support our clergy in their mission. Help us to understand our own personal ministry, vocation or calling as your Easter people, so we live our lives according to the Gospel of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, on this holy day and in the light of Christ's victory over death, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We especially remember those affected by COVID-19. And in a time of silence, we call to mind those known to us. Grant them hope in their troubles. And may they and those who minister to them feel the power of your embrace. Encircle with love those separated from family or friends, as well as the lonely, the homeless, the hopeless. May they find strength in your loving care through our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of resurrection and life, we thank you for the lives of the dearly departed and we pray for those who mourn. In a moment of silence, we call to mind those known to us. May we, surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, walk in their footsteps and be fully reunited with them in your everlasting kingdom. Comfort and strengthen the bereaved, that they feel your ever-loving presence in their darkest moments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, on this holy day, and in the light of Christ's victory over death, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and every day. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. 
Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.